Hi, today I'm going to talk about interpretation and its uses in 2D graphics. Interpretation, first of all, is a field of mathematical numerical analysis that allows the user to construct new data points within a specific range. Now, there are countless applications and many different implementation methods, all suited to pre presenting results in a specific or unique way. Um, in computer graphics, interpretation is often used to fill in the gaps between, between two points in 2D or 3D space. The most basic method is called linear interpretation. Um, this simply takes two points in space and draws a line between them. But Dart Basic Professional has the line command, so there's no particular advantage to using this method. However, interpretation um, comes into its own when you start looking at cosine and cubic interpretation. Well, they, they basically do the same sort of thing, only using different data sets. The cubic method is far more accurate because it uses four data points. The cosine is a lot easier to code because it's simply two data points. And this is a method we're going to be using as this is an introduction to interpretation and its basic concepts. Um, if you wish to go into cubic interpretation, then you can certainly search on Google and you'll find the mathematics involved and you can convert that into a function yourself. Um, but as I say, for this particular example, we're going to use uh, cosine interpretation which simply takes two data points which is the easiest to get started with and it will produce a nice curved line between those two points now again it's not as accurate as cubic interpretation which of course draws the lines um, between those two points but takes into account the additional four data sets um, but again, we're just going to use uh, cosine interpretation for this particular example. So we're going to start off with our usual initialization code. I'm just going to move my netbook over there, which I've been reading from, and grab my keyboard. And we're going to start off by uh, typing in sync on and backdrop on, uh, color backdrop zero. And we're going to set randomize to three. This means we got a predictable result whenever we use the RND command. So basically you'll be able to produce a unique and random terrain simply by altering the randomized number. So you can have anything you like. Um, now we're going to create a nice little um, array in memory. So dim y list. This is going to store um, a list of points along the y-axis and then we're just going to move it along with other commands using the, the x-axis when it comes to drawing. But all we're doing now is we're creating our data set, um, we're creating 11 points. Um, remember zero is counted as a, a slot within an, within an array. We're going to set this as an integer, we don't actually need to do that because it doesn't have a symbol but I'll do it for habit's sake more than anything else. Um, so what we're going to do now is seed that uh, array with uh, 4x equals 0 to 10 uh, rand nope sorry y list x <laughs> else when you put it in the right slot equals rnd uh, 128 at 300 and what we're basically doing here is uh, remember the y-axis is up and down so uh, the, the higher the number the further down the screen it goes so what we're doing is we're creating sort of a roughly ground level terrain with a um, variation amount of 128 so um, just by uh, altering the 128 you can create different heights of terrain and different results so you can play around with those numbers later on this is the one i've settled on because i think it looks quite attractive and we're going to do next x and that that completes the uh, initial code the setting up of the data so we're going to proceed on to our loop so remember and do sync and loop and between here now we're going to plot this data onto the screen first and we're going to do this by creating the reference dots well i'm going to use circles and dots and uh, i'll try and represent that to the screen then and uh, so x equals zero we need to make sure x equals zero here otherwise every time the screen resets it's just going to count keep going off the screen and we'll basically lose our dots which we don't want to do and we're going to go for y equals 0 to 10. Next y. And between those two points. 
Sorry, I'm just going over my code to make sure I type this in correctly. Um, dot x, because we want to start off at zero, list y. So basically, we're, uh, we're drawing the y list here, and we're drawing the dot there. Now, we need to space these out at 64 um, pixel spaces, so ink x comma 64 because we want to start it off at zero we're going to start it off at zero which means we put this, the ink command after the dot command and that ensures that we get um it you know, placed in the right position and i've also got the circle command so we can put the circle command in there as well so circle x comma y list uh we're going to give that y and radius of four will do so we'll compile that code and that should show our data set there. So as you can see, these are the data sets that I'm going to draw between. Now, at the moment, they don't look like that much. What we're going to do is draw a nice curve between these points in 2D space. And we're going to do the other thing I want to do, of course, is change the color so we can actually tell between them nice and easy. And we're going to do this with ink. RGB two five five comma zero comma zero and zero and that will give us a nice uh, series of whoops stretching out there a nice series of red dots you can see the circles there so I'll stretch that a bit more it sort of warps the graphics but you can see there are dots there more easily so you've got little circles with little dots uh, so what we're going to do now is actually get our interpretation in order now we're going to write a function for this. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to write the initial um, do code and then we'll go through the function itself. So ink RGB, so if I'm doing this back to front, 255 comma 0. Um, the reason I'm doing it in this order is because I want the red dots and circles to draw on top of the green landscape. That will make it easier to see, otherwise there's just no point in having the dots in there. You just have, might as well just have the circles. So, um, uh, there we go. Uh, Got the zero so again we're going to reset x to zero and for y equals zero to nine and for z equals one to 64 and i could have named these a little bit better i have to admit but um they'll get the point across uh ink x uh, dot x and we're going to use our interpolate command here. And what we're going to do here is we're going to type in interpolate cosine. This is going to be the function we create. And we're going to give it our y list, which is our first reference point. So y. We're going to give it y list our second data point. So plus 1. And Z is going to be the uh, position between those two points. So remember, I spaced them out, but I spaced the dots out at 64 pixel intervals. So this is basically taking care of the drawing between each of those, and then it's cycling through each point in the screen. So we've got um, uh, for Y equals zero to nine. That means it's drawing uh, ten segments there. Remember, zero is counted as one. Um, then it's drawing the 64 dots between those two points and uh, interpolating interpolating interpolate whatever the word however the pronounce the word is pronounced um it's basically drawing the dots between there um in a nice curve so uh or at least it will do once we create the function so z and next whoops y and uh, I think that's all I need to do. Yeah, that's all I need to do. So that's the main body of the code. Now the magic happens in the function itself. And uh, rather than risk accidentally typing things in wrong, I'm going to type in and copy there. So function interpolate cosine, and I'm going to give it change these to uh, y1, uh, y2 and mu hash now this is the uh, point in space 
uh, the first point in space, the second point in space, and the position between those spaces, which also needs a comma. So um, because I've left 64 pixels, we're going to use, uh, it's going to count from 0 to 64, which is uh, the Z thingy there. Uh, and we're going to output from the function. So, whoops, end function. And we're going to have output hash and this will basically output the result there directly into the dot command <coughs> now the first thing we need to do is take our math and go mu2 hash remember everything needs to be in floats in order for this to work if you leave it as integer um, this will not work uh, so minus one cos mu hash uh, star um, we're going to put in pi here, so that's uh, 3.14159 uh, just to be semi-accurate. And we need to double uh, brackets that and divide by 2. So that's uh, working out the MU2 statement there. And now we're going to set out our output. So output equals uh, bracket uh, y1 hash and we're going to multiply that by uh, 1 minus mu2 hash and we're going to add y2 hash and multiply that by mu2 and hash and that's basically our mathematics. So what I've basically done is gone on the internet, I've researched this and I've found this equation and then I've converted it into the function. Now if you want me to explain the specifics of how this works then to be honest I have no idea. I tend to find this information that produces a particular result and then convert it towards my own needs. So if you want to go into the detailed um, bits and pieces of interpolation and uh, the cosine interpolation or even if you understand it better than i do then please feel free to comment and explain it to me but as i say this works and that tends to be as far as i go in programming as i tend to find something that works and then use it so if we compile that now as you can see we now have our data points here and as you can see what it's basically done is drawn between those two points it's drawn between those two points we've got this sort of this nice bezier kind of curve and we've drawn between those two points and those two points and those two points and basically we've got a nice sort of terrain looking environment here so again if i go up and i go to change this number to just type in something random on the keys uh, 347 and compile that then we get a completely different terrain there and if we put in that amount get a completely unique terrain there as well so this is basically procedurally generated terrain and if you're creating a game like lunar lander which would be the most famous one for this or scorched earth then you've just created terrain that's completely random and every time you start a new level or start a new game you will get um, a completely unique level now of course we can also add in platforms and, and adding lots of codes and produce a lunar lander game as well um, but i'll leave that to you this is just a basic um, introduction to interpretation as you can see it works pretty well it's not as good as uh, cubic interpretation will be but it's okay and uh, it does the job so uh, there we go if you want to create a lunar lander or any kind of terrain landscape even something like defender i suppose could use this uh, or you could use a side scrolling um, game um, for instance uh, if you put in a lot more data points if you put in a thousand data points then you could just continue drawing between those two points so you can basically just scroll it off the left and you know you could have a uh, an endless terrain with as many data points as you can create all this is really doing is uh, putting um, a nice curve between each of those points you can just carry on going forever and ever and ever so there we go there's um, interpretation this is the cosine interpretation um, again if you want a more accurate one something that goes between all the points more smoothly um, then go for cubic interpretation but I'll leave that to you or you know if I have time I'll do a tutorial on, on cubic interpretation I haven't actually converted the mathematics myself yet I don't really see a need for it um, this does the job for these kind of
uh, retro games that I'm attempting to play around with and just create simple tutorials for. So anyway, I hope this explains something without really explaining the in-depth mathematics, um, but it certainly demonstrates you uh, how to create um, these kinds of uh, trains and graphics um, using the random IC generator and basically we're just drawing all procedurally. So anyway, thanks for watching, thanks for listening to my uh, random um, blather afterwards and uh, I hope you find this useful.